Hi guys, welcome to another Road Pilgrim car review and today we have the Maserati Gracale SUV behind us on review which is the good looking car here. Um, I think quite little has been said about the car in Singapore and what I find really interesting is that it actually sits in the same price bracket as more common options such as the BMW X3, the Mercedes-Benz GLC and even the RX350. So um, really it's quite an accessible car if you think about it. Um, definitely still very luxurious um, as with the other competitors as well but um, today we are going to go um, check out the exterior, uh, jump inside and I'll show you a little bit of the, in the interior, it's actually quite interesting and uh, of course we're going to go take it for a drive. Um, so without any further ado, let's go! Right, so here is the exterior of the Maserati Grotale and as you can see, it looks quite similar to the Levante, which is the Grecale's larger sibling. But truth be told, if you put the cars side by side, um, or maybe not exactly side by side, but if you put the cars uh, sort of uh, in the same vicinity, you, you, you might not actually be able to tell the size difference. They are actually quite similar in terms of size, to be honest. But of course, the Levante is a little bit bigger, both in terms of overall length and in terms of the leg room as well. But generally, I think this looks like a very upmarket SUV and what I like about the car is that despite being a Maserati, it doesn't go all out to try and be overly sporty about it as well. As you can see, the rims, the wheels are still very reasonably specced for comfort. So you do get quite a lot of ride comfort in the car and you know instead of going for the whole blacked out, super aggressive thing, it's actually got a nice amount of chrome on it. So. I think the Grocale actually feels quite luxurious and um, quite in line with that branding as well. So here is the back of the car and to the other side. And of course, you know, to remind everybody that you're driving a Maserati, you've got this Trident logo on the C pillars as well, which is very nice. Um, and then, of course, you have these very cool air vents, side vents of the car. And here it says GT, which refers to the trim level. Uh, this car is actually the um, GT line, which uh, is the entry level model of the Maserati Grecale. Of course, this being the entry level car for Maserati, does not in any way or form mean that it is an entry level car because it is still super luxurious inside as we will show you in a minute. So let's jump in and check out the cabin of the Maserati Grecale. Alright, so jumping into the cabin of the Maserati Grecale, let me just start the car first. So your start stop button is actually on the steering wheel itself along with the drive mode selector. So this is actually um, not your drive mode selector per se, but it lets you select between your comfort GT uh, and your sports mode. So um, this is all on the steering wheel um, as a sporty car should be, right? Um, and up front here you have a full digital driver's display which is very cool and of course you've got your multi-function steering wheel which is flat bottomed um, through which you can adjust various menus uh, in the driver's instrument panel. Uh, let's see, um, I think one of the things that you kind of instantly realise about the Gokale is how large the pedal shifters are which of course are really nice, these are solid aluminium so they're very pretty, um, very similar to the uh, Alfa Romeo Stelvio SUV, so very cool, and I think I don't. I'm not sure if whether like whether it's an Italian car thing, but generally speaking, I think the large pedal shifters are very cool. Um, they give it a very sporty edge, and most importantly, they are accessible from many driving um, positions. So even if you have your hands further down, uh, these pedal shifters are actually accessible. Or whether they, or when you, or if you have them further up, they're also very accessible. Um, there is a generous amount of leather around the cabin. It's a very nice stitching as well, and I think all this does kind of scream Italian luxury. 
um, flair and elegance and luxury, I think it's all very present within the Crocale. So like I said, you know, despite being the entry car from Maserati, it is in no way or form an entry level car. <laughs> Alright, so going to the center console, what you have is a rather nicely designed uh, integrated control panel here which houses your touchscreen display and it also houses your drive selector your actual drive selector so park reverse neutral drive and manual are all buttons um, in, in in this particular panel i think it's a little bit weird to control the drive selectors through a button uh, but i think it's all in line with being a little bit more modern a little bit more contemporary uh, but honestly i would still prefer a physical uh, shifter or like a selector i know now it's all drive by wire anyway so honestly it doesn't really make a difference but i think it just kind of feels nice when you're in a rather sporty car then you have something to kind of hold on to here and um, aside from using your pedal shifters having a sort of a steptronic or whether you have a sort of a um, uh, like you push your gear shifter to the side for a manual mode and then you shift through the shifter i think that's quite nice still to have okay um because it's a Maserati and I think not a lot has been said about the car, um, not a lot of comparisons have been made as well, um, you probably have not seen this infotainment system on the market on any other car, um, but I think it's a pretty cool infotainment system because despite seemingly being quite complicated at first glance it's actually quite straightforward once you get used to it and a lot of the little little things in the car are actually accessible very directly uh, through sub menus within the control panel so for example your auto start stop button is right here which is really really pleasant uh, you don't have to go through or cycle through menus to get to it uh, the other thing i kind of like is that this particular clock here uh, it's Although it shows an analog display, this is actually digital and you can easily control what you want to show on this little piece through, uh, through the control panel. So up here now we have clock, uh, I'm going to change it to a compass, uh, I don't really know why you would need a compass but anyway, uh, still cool to have. Uh, pedals, what is pedal? Um, so it shows you um, the amount of whether you're, you're putting on power through your gas pedal or applying your brakes uh, through your brake pedal and last but not least you also have a G meter for you to track how much G force you are generating in the car when you are accelerating or putting the car through corners so I think that's really cool um, very very clear cut it's a very clear example of how the system allows you to assess some of the smaller sub-functions very directly. You don't have to go through a lot of menus to get there. Um, the other thing that I think is extremely cool about the Grocale is the fact that you can actually control the temperature and the fan speed in a very interesting way. So let me show you. If you want to control the fan speed, all you need to do is just tap your finger into the middle of the screen and drag it across. So in the middle is 3, 2, 1, back to 3, 4, 5, 6. Does it go 6? Yes. Does it go to 7? No, it goes to 6. But this is actually really really cool because I think it's quite intuitive and when you're driving, honestly sometimes it's a bit distracting to have to look for a particular fan speed button. Um, in the Grocale, however, you can just drag your finger. And the same thing applies to temperature as well. So if you want the temperature to go up or down, you just need to swap your finger up and down. So, whoa, what did I do? Okay, I did something wrong there. Um, you just need to drag it. As you can see here, which is very nice. I think this is probably one of the standout features in the in in the control panel inside the Grocale. Um, elsewhere, you've got some, um, of course, very nice fittings as well. The car is very well built. Uh, you've got this uh, sort of this charred ash wood kind of uh, uh, finish in the center console. You've got two cup holders. You've got a wireless charging pad. I don't. There's a storage bin right here. I don't actually see any USB Cs. 
but I could be mistaken. Oh yeah, there is. So there, there is a, there are two USB ports inside this panel here, inside this storage bin here. Um, elsewhere, the door is actually activated through a button, so there is no lever, and and and, and that's quite nice, quite high end. And of course, you've got a Sonus Faber sound system in the Kukali, which is pretty pretty upmarket. So that's that with the cabin of the Grecale and uh, let's jump into the back and check out whether or not this Grecale is going to be um, a practical car to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Alright, let's go! Okay, so I am now inside the I'm, I'm in the rear section of the Grecale this driver's seat is in my regular driving position and I am 175 meters tall and this is the amount of legroom that I have while I am seated completely upright. And this is the amount of headroom that I have. We have probably about 5 to 6 centimeters of headroom. So all this is actually very very comfortable and very very family sized. Um, and I think the use of space in the cabin is probably quite smart uh, in a sense where um, I, I think you still get quite a bit of room despite um, the amount of fittings and the thickness of the door panel because if you look at the door panel it is almost 10-12cm uh, thick so it's a very very thick door panel but yet you still get a healthy amount of room here uh, you've got some storage uh, stuff here which you can use uh, and you've also got rear aircon vents but these do not have a dedicated like, climate control, so they are following the temperature settings from the front. Uh, you've also got another two USB ports at the back here, as well as some storage, a small little storage compartment here. I'm uh, not exactly sure what you're supposed to store here, but anyway, uh, still good to have. The, uh, the hump in the middle is actually not too big. So if you really wanted to sit three at the back, you probably could. Um, although this seat is, is a little bit raised up, uh, not so much that this is raised up, but that the, the the actual passenger seats are actually properly uh, sunken in for better comfort. And if I really kind of you know sit in a more natural position, kind of slouch down, you still actually have quite a decent amount of leg room and even more headroom. So overall, despite having a dark coloured roof interior, I think the Maserati Grandale feels quite spacious and quite luxurious indeed. Um, if on the off chance you are also carrying kids in the back, this will comfortably seat um, or accommodate child seats, uh, even rearward facing ones. You might have to move the seats front a little bit, but generally they will work. Uh, you have isofix points, but they are the old school kind that is buried beneath. Let me see. Yes, they are buried be between the. The, the rear backrest and the seat cushion um, but nonetheless they exist so you can definitely use them oh, actually even at the back you've got embossed seats which is actually pretty cool um, very nicely done indeed so I think in the rear here I think a RX is, a Lexus RX is probably a little bit bigger um, but it is probably quite on par with something like an X3 or a GLC and of course, I think that there's more to the car than just the rear seats. Uh, in a car like that, especially like a car like a Maserati, um, the drive is probably what's going to set it apart from the rest of its competitors as well. So, let's jump back into the driver's seat and take this car for a spin and see what we can deduce from the drive of the Maserati. Alright, so now we are going to take the Grecale for a drive and uh, see how it does on the road. Uh, but before we get started, uh, first things first, this car runs on a 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder and this is a mild hybrid with a 48-volt mild hybrid system that actually is used to power the turbocharger. Um, so, I'm not exactly sure how much fuel economy you will derive from that but I guess in today's context, a mild hybrid is kind of like a 
you know, it's like a must-have, right? You know, most of the brands are trying to be a little bit more efficient. So I guess every little bit helps. Um, when you start the car, the car actually by default starts in GT mode, which is the middle of the three modes. And you can actually go to comfort mode, which actually limits the revs, I think. And you can also uh, bring the car to sport mode, which we are going to do right now. And um, this 2 liter engine produces almost 300 horsepower and about 450 newton meters of torque, which is very impressive for a 2 liter engine. And I would say that this on paper is definitely more powerful than most of its key competitors out there in the same price point. So like I said earlier, in the same price point, you probably find cars like the RX350, um, BMW X3 and the uh, Mercedes-Benz GLC and I can guarantee you this is going to be quicker. In fact, if I am not mistaken, this is also quicker than a 2-litre Macan. So that's something to think about if you are looking at a performance SUV and I think it's also bigger and more spacious than the Macan so um, and they cost about the same amount of money so um, it's really kind of something to think about I feel um, you, you know you, it's something you want to consider if you're looking at a car in this price point uh, but anyway I'm talking too much uh, let's just go uh, so let's put the car in drive uh, auto start stop is off I'm going to put the car in a manual mode first and just kind of show you what's going on. So, one of the first things that I'm going to do is that I'm going to sort of um, rev up the car a little bit for you to hear what's going on. For you to get a better sensing of what's going on. So, let's go. It's quite pleasant actually. So being a four cylinder, obviously the sound is not the most beautiful sound in the world, but I must say that it is quite a refined four cylinder actually. Um, this is actually mated to a eight speed ZF. So transmission wise, you've got one of the best transmissions that has ever been created. Uh, and for those of you who don't know this, uh, a ZF eight speed is the transmission that is used uh, pretty much throughout the whole BMW range um, and generally rear-wheel drive performance cars this is this is sort of the transmission of choice it's got really really nice quick shifts which are probably only a fraction slower than maybe say an Astronic uh, dual clutch but it's still a very quick gearbox um, it's tested and proven, so I think the assumption is that it's fairly reliable. After all, this this transmission has been probably used uh, uh, in in cars, you know, that are from 2010. Of course, uh, now the uh, 8 speed ZF is in its second generation, so I think it's even better than before. But yes, I think you've got a very good transmission here. It does downshift in a rather in a slightly rougher fashion than than experience in other cars but uh, I'm not sure if that's just down to the power rating or down to the, uh, the, the setup. Um, but overall I think the Grocale is still a very refined car for a 2 litre engine which I think is something that is worth noting because a lot of the cars that um, are in the same segment they probably run slightly bigger setups uh, for example like the Lexus RX runs a bigger setup but then again there's also really not much comparison because that car is kind of built for comfort and this car does have some sporty elements to it so as you can hear it's got a it's got a nice lively engine you can hear the gear shifts as well Although it's not the exact same platform, it is 
based on sort of like a stretched out version of the platform that is used on the Alfa Romeo Stelvio SUV which of course we know is a very proficient car a proficient handling SUV uh, that I think many drivers are quite fond of uh, so the Gracale does share some of those characteristics it is quite sharp in terms of handling but nonetheless you know as I pointed out earlier doing the exterior walkabout it doesn't really feel like the Gracale wants to be seen as an all-out sports SUV um, it does seem to exude that luxurious feel a little bit more than you know for example the Alpha and uh, I think honestly if you were to be looking at this car you will probably also be viewing the car the sort of hybrid use right it's, it, it, it's like it's not the car that you want to chuck around corners all the time it's also probably something that you want to ferry your family around in um, and you want to take longer road trips in and experience some of the comfort that you experience um, with luxury with luxury SUVs and on that note the car is actually very very comfortable as well earlier on we were we were going through um, I don't know some of you are, like whether some of you are familiar with uh, the car parks around the Linky area but the Anchor Point car park actually has pretty harsh humps and most of the cars that we bring through there um, struggle with the humps there but this car was actually very very comfortable so I think that's a job well done in terms of suspension setup um, and I think it shows that this car is capable of not just being a performance SUV but also being very comfortable family friendly so I mean once again you know because I think quite little has been said about the Maserati Gracale and because I mean you're more likely to have a friend that has an X3 that you have tried than, than, than for you to have a, 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 a friend who has had a Gracale that you can try so I would say that if you are interested in, a, in the Gracale or to consider something a little bit more special something that drives a little bit better um, has a bit more sporting pedigree than the average um, mass market luxury SUV I think you should really really take a look at this car and I think the best way to do that is of course to head down to the showroom to experience a test drive for yourself I think when I when I started this review I thought this review was gonna be a little bit more complicated to put forth but you know to be very honest I think the selling points are very straightforward um, obviously if you down to GT mode and settle down. So yeah, so obviously if you're looking for a uh, premium luxury SUV, you, you know what your options are and, and I think inclusive of COE, you know, all the cars that I mentioned, they will all cost close to 400000 But I think in Singapore, all the other options are kind of, uh, in a way, mainstream or mass market already. Um, and we have seen them pretty often so if you would like to consider something a little bit more special I think the Maserati Gracale is a good option to look at and um, you know it doesn't actually cost more it actually costs about the same as like I said the X3, the GLC, the RX They're all in the same ballpark um, and the Macan as well as you can see in front is this a 2 litre? yes I think it's a 2 litre so in that sense the value proposition for the Gracale is actually very very clear. Whoa, McCann almost killed me. It's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, so the value proposition for, for the Gracale is actually pretty clear. You know, it's quicker than a McCann, more spacious than a McCann, um, more sporty than all the other three. And I think the brand is also a little bit more exotic. So there you have it. Okay, um, if I've missed out anything, uh, about the car that you want to know about please leave those questions in the comment section below I'd be more than happy to answer them and uh, if you have found this review useful in any way or if you have enjoyed it please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel because we've got new reviews coming out every single week sometimes more than once a week and uh, we would love for you to be a part of that and to join us as well um, if not, please take care of yourself, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.